one has dreamed of immortality. But the fruit of eternal life has always been devoured by death itself. Immortality? Why would anyone want to live forever in a world like this? Darling, it's me again. Yes, I'll be home in a while. The fog is very thick out here, and it's kind of slowed me down. Damn it, Anne. I worry when you drive up to see your folks. It's a lousy road, even in good weather. It's all right. I'll be just fine. Wait I'm a minute, I'm still worried Anne. about you, darling. You, you still don't sound right. Are you okay? Honey, you didn't have to trek out in this weather ahead of schedule because of me. I was just feeling a little upset this afternoon. Really, I'm all right now. Well, it's not like you. You sounded so strange. If you really want to know, I was feeling a little homesick for my own bed. Hey, can I get arrested if I make this an obscene phone call? Or would you rather I save that for when I get home? I love you so, Tom. I'll love you forever. And ever. See you soon. Yes, Anne. Real soon. I love you too, Anne. Hello, this is Dr. Gerard again. Is Father O'Brien back from church yet? Any minute? Yes, please have him call me as soon as he gets back. Tell him it's urgent. Life and death. <laughs> Father O'Brien, thank God. I can't hold off any longer. It's happening tonight, and... <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Who is this? The angels will be there in a few minutes. Please be ready for them. <laughs>
Beach Station. Could you connect me with Sergeant McGuire right away? Yes, please. Tom Gerard, it's an emergency. Take a second, Tom. me on this, Anne. You know this will help to subdue those nightmares. Needles frighten me. I'd rather have the pills if you'll give them to me. Of course. I'd never liked needles, even before that incident in the hallway. Nothing happened in the hallway. Your phobia is associated with Tom's heart attack. You still refuse to believe me, don't you? After I found Tom dead, two men grabbed me and knocked me out with a drug. The same two men murdered Tom. Easy. Easy. It was a scary night for you, especially when the police arrived and found no evidence of what you're saying. No struggle. No needles. He was murdered. I know it. And Tom called Dr. Johnson short time before you got home. Tom said he was feeling chest pains. And even you yourself said he didn't sound right on the phone. When Dr. Johnson arrived, he was already dead, and you were hysterical. I may have been hysterical, but I know what I saw, and I know I didn't make it up. My name's Sergeant McGuire. I'm a cop. And I was getting nowhere investigating the disappearance of two med students until I found one of their professors, Tom Gerard, dead. Gerard had called me in a panic, but by the time I got to him, a colleague of his, Dr. Sven Johnson, was already there. Dr. Johnson insisted the cause of death was a heart attack, and I saw no signs of a struggle to dispute his claim. But everything was too clean, and when Tom's wife, Ann, said she saw two men running from the house when she discovered the body, Dr. Johnson and his assistant, Lil Stanhope, were there to convince her she was hysterical. The doctors seemed to have all the right answers ahead of time. And I figured if I knew more about this mysterious death, I might also find out about those missing students. So I went to see Lil Stanhope with the intention of getting to Ann Gerard, who is now one of her patients. Can I help you? I'm Detective McGuire. I'm here on a routine investigation. I was wondering if you might answer a few questions. What sort of investigation? Well, now, it seems some former students of yours have been missing. A Bob Russell and a Richard Kirk. Their landlady thought they were skipping rent. But some checking has gone on, and it seems no one has seen them since your last seminar at the university. I have so many young people in my class. But I think I remember this, too. Very bright. I must say, I've been wondering about the reason that they didn't sign up for my new class. Yes, well, we were wondering that also. Some of their friends said they were very fond of you and Dr. Johnson. They went out with you once or twice, didn't they? Not in a social sense. Some of my classes incorporate field trips to special locations, so 
Neither of the guys had any family to speak of, but Russell was seeing a young med student, Lisa Cochran. Do you know her? No. Oh, well. I guess they were boyfriend-girlfriend. She said Bob was participating in some sort of drug program headed by you and Dr. Johnson. That program was on extended consciousness only. Is there a difference? Our experiments are on the order of mental concepts only, completely free of drugs, including cigarettes and alcohol. If you say so, I'm sure it's true. But Lisa did mention drugs. I say they're using drugs. It wasn't with my knowledge or approval. I'm very busy now. And you seem to know more about my students than I do, so if you'll excuse me. Just one more thing. A friend of mine was admitted here, Ann Gerard. Could you help me find the room number? Why, she is my patient, but I just gave her sedatives. I'm afraid I'll have to see her another time. A pretty bad acting job, I'd say. It doesn't take much to see through her indignant rage, but it wasn't the right time to press her. I see you've met Detective McGuire. He practically accosted me at the nurse station. He may be a little overzealous in his job. Then he knows, and he asked to see her. Tom made a mistake involving those boys. Suppose he's told Anne. I know there's going to be trouble. I just know it. Nothing we can't handle. How's Anne's therapy? She's still not convinced she was hallucinating. I hope she doesn't talk to this Maguire, considering our murder angle. Ridiculous. Tom died of a heart attack. I signed a death certificate myself. And what? If Anne pushes for an autopsy, hmm? You worry too much. Of course, she didn't want me to see Anne. But what I was wondering I'm was so whether Anne would even cooperate with me once I got to talk to her. You see, Anne Gerard was going to be Anne McGuire. Anyway, she broke off her engagement for no apparent reason. And the next day, she was getting married to Tom Gerard. Perhaps Catherine could stay with her for a while. Anne could use a nurse close by while she recuperates. Well, Catherine, I could stay with her for a while. Oh, no, my dear. I'm too fond of your company in my bedroom. Sometimes I really don't know what I see in you, Sven. You remind me too much of one of your cold, immortal creations. Maybe you appeal to some sense of danger and adventure in me. It's always been a mystery to me why she acted so irrationally when it was clear she cared for me so much. So I figured with her help, I may solve this case, and with Tom out of the way, I'll have a chance to win her back. You can start on Anne's paperwork for her release tomorrow. How is she? Asleep. I gave her sedative. Why don't you go have a chat? Of course. Anne, are you awake? Dressed like that. Do you love me, Anne? Yes, Tom, I love you. Turn around, Anne. Undress for me. Good news. You can go home today. You're a little anxious about going home, aren't you? That's normal. Anne, I hope you don't think I'm being pushy. But I feel at this stage of your therapy, it would be good if you were to mingle again 
dead. Maybe even go to work. I think I really just want to be left alone for a while. And to isolate yourself now could be very damaging. Passion. My set in. Come back to the university. No, I don't think so. Why not? Because I'm upset with you. Why? You promised to help me decipher my dreams. You haven't said anything about the one I had last night. Oh, that's it. I thought you might be able to analyze it yourself. It's so obvious to me. What is? Halloween night. The beach. Baza Brian. Tom. They were having a celebration. Cass and then swimming. Remember? Come here, please. Aren't you getting cold? No, I'm not cold. Catherine will tell us when she's uncomfortable. Won't you, Catherine? But if she gets too cold? Actually, I'm more concerned about her being too close to the fire. Let's add an extra hour to her therapy tomorrow. At this stage, I'd hate to see a setback for any reason. She is your best work, then? Yes, she is. When are Tom and Father O'Brien coming? Here they are. The good father and I sought some fortification against the cold. He was like this when I found him at the rectory. Don't worry, it was good brandy. Makes you forget all your problems. I'm afraid it's my fault. I wasn't watching out. Oh, no, 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 no. It's not your fault. It's not anybody's fault. You know, guilt is just an outmoded concept. Kind of like the idea of a soul. Just ask any of my students. Are you all right, Tom? Yeah, just fine, Sven. Just a bit reluctant to go leaping into the brave new world. Have you ever noticed how cold Catherine is? She's like walking ice. Tom. Tom, come here. Tom, you're acting like a fool. Get your head together. You're talking too much. Talking's good for the soul. I can't say that, can I? I haven't got a soul. Listen, Tom, I'm not going to let your little guilt trip spoil this project. I'm not going to guilt. I'm going to hell. Will you all please form a circle? Before we begin, I would like to thank you all for a wonderful and enlightening semester. The concept of immortality, or life after death, is rarely celebrated in the American tradition, with the exception of this night, Halloween, which is why I chose to end my class at this time. Being all soulsy, I have asked one of our guest lecturers, Father O'Brien, 
to help us with the ceremony. Father O'Brien? The, uh, the, this, uh, this evening in Alder, quainter times was not one that was, uh, primarily concerned with cold shadows or vague specters or trick-or-treaters, but it was a celebration of the spirit of resurrection. The, uh, circle of fire represents the sun, which is the symbol of the immortal Christ. And with this in mind, I'd like you all to join hands. To immortality, Father. Of the heavenly kind, I'm sure. I think it's just students having a good time. This thing about immortality, do you think that's pagan? Well, not really. Most religions have a concept of immortality, of course. Do you want to tell me exactly what's on your mind? On one condition. It has to be under the seal of confession. All right. We excuse us, Anne? Of course. to the hospital. Sven and I are just loaded with work. Give some thought about coming back to the university. You could help Sven and me finish Tom's research. I'll think about it. I always felt so e uneasy about Tom's work. Surely immortality doesn't frighten you. Living forever. After all, that's what most religious philosophies are about. I don't know. Well, anyway, get some hot dear. See you tomorrow in my office.
sorry I startled you. Didn't Lil tell you I was coming? What we call death, the final stage of being or non-being, is merely a change state, often temporary and sometimes curable. I'm frightened, Sven. About what? What we are doing is wrong. We are interfering with nature. We're doctors. We interfere with nature every time we arrest the course of a disease. But this is a different, so things we create are not human beings. Perhaps. But one of these days, our experiments will create immortality. Immortality? Did I ever tell you that I was married? No. John is in the army, so? When the Vietnam War broke out, they sent overseas. He didn't want to go. He, we both knew he wouldn't be back. So I was not surprised when I received this letter. We were glad to inform you. I did not cry. I just went outside, sat on the porch. I did not even think about John. All I could envision was how incredible it would be if life could go on. Immortality. me about love, I'd say it's a lot like life. When it's over, it's over. I've never been one to sulk or go soft, but I'm to sure my love for Anne and hers for me, ours was the kind that would go on forever. And then she had to ruin it by running into the arms of that doctor, Tom Gerard. We're so close to making that dream come true. Immortality. With Ann out of the hospital, I followed her to school to talk to her there. But how could I talk about Tom without sounding sour and convince her to help me on this case? You have asked me whether I, as a physician, believe literal immortality is possible. I have to say, the problem is the definition of death. All men are mortal. All men must die. We may as well say, all machinery must break down. We are, after all, very much like sophisticated machines. But we know, with proper maintenance and repair, a machine can go on working indefinitely. The same holds true for the human body. The Greek letter theta stands for Thanatos, the word for death. The bar above it cancels its meaning. Potentially, each one of us is Athanatus, immortal. Death is a stage we can conquer. It is curable. We can live forever. And that leaves plenty of time for messing around. Oh, Kevin, you startled me. What are you doing here anyway? Looking for you. They wouldn't let me near you at the hospital. I thought a policeman could see whoever he wanted to. Well, I suppose I could have pressed it, but they told me you had leprosy. I figured, what the hell. <sighs> You probably thought worse things about me after our breakup. And then marrying Tom. I still danced at your wedding. Remember? Yes, I remember the wedding. You're still very much in love with him, aren't you? Hey, if you need a friend, I'm here. Thanks. 
You always have been, Kevin. Anne, I came here because I need to talk to you about Tom. What about him? Can we go someplace else? A restaurant, maybe? Okay, but let me call Catherine. She's my nurse. Your nurse? Now, let me guess. She's 80, and she doesn't smoke or drink, and she won't go with anybody that does. <laughs> Hello? Yes, Sam. No, go ahead. Have a good time. I'll be here if you need me. Hello? She's with him. That's ridiculous. I know Lil very well. She would never be a part of anything like that. I've been to a few of the experimental sessions, which added up nothing more than a few kids sitting around a circle, chanting, trying to raise the flame of a candle. And Dr. Johnson? Sven? He's a scientist, silent and analytical. He has a private lab, doesn't he? Yes, it's in his basement. Kevin, I know what you're implying, but I can't believe that they would be involved in anything that would deliberately harm anyone. They're doctors. Damn. I'm not accusing anyone of anything. You said you wanted to come here and talk about Tom. Well, what does all this with Lil and Sven have to do with him? <sighs> the stories go on to say that Tom had a hand in it. And will you wait a second? Just wait a minute. It's easy for you to blacklist him, isn't it? Ann, I'm not saying that Tom murdered anyone. I'm just saying he's part of the puzzle I'm trying to solve. You didn't try as hard to solve his murder. There was nothing in the report to suggest that he was murdered. But I saw it. Ann, you've been under a lot of pressure. I saw him murdered. I did. Okay. Okay. Easy. It's clouding up. Let's go back to the car, huh? Okay. I just wish you believed me. If it's true, we need proof. I'll need your help. What can I do? Everyone thinks I'm crazy. I know that Tom would never hurt anybody on purpose, but I can't help but feel that Dr. Johnson had him caught up in something mysterious. Something that might have led to his death? Maybe. Listen, next time you're in Johnson's office, see if you can find anything that relates to his experiments, like old records, charts, anything that might be helpful. I'll try. And go through Tom's files as well. See if anything there relates to Johnson's. Listen, did Tom ever talk with anyone outside the university? I think he talked to Father O'Brien. In fact, last summer he went to confession. And? Father O'Brien wouldn't give him absolution. That's strange. Listen, I think maybe we'd better go see Father O'Brien first thing in the morning, okay? Okay. All right. Have you come to any conclusions yet? Possibly. Her physical temperature hasn't risen, but her emotional tenure was very heated. Psychologically, she may have triggered a malfunction in her prefrontal circuitry. Then we attend to that, then what? Will she be as unstable as before? Will she end up like Tom and Russell, who are more like monsters than anything human? And Kirk's behavior is rapidly bordering on a pathological state. You are responsible for that. You sent him on this terrorizing errand. It was something that had to be done. I'll put a stop to it tonight. I'm aware that we've had some minor malfunctions. The cranial circuitry will have to be perfected in order to keep the body temperature low enough to retard the aging process. But in time, 
future generations will have achieved the ultimate in religious and scientific vanity, eternal you. But so many failures, Sven. Our last experiment was successful. Would you like to have another look at him? Tom? He scares me most of all. Then let's prepare for a cranial incision. I want to inspect the circuitry. I realize the importance of what both of you suspect, but I cannot reveal under the seal of confession anything. But what about all those other times? Did he ever say anyone was threatening him? No, but he did try and reach me the night he died. My housekeeper said he was very agitated. Yeah, he tried to reach me also. I'm sorry, Anne. I should have told you earlier. I can't believe Tom had any enemies, except maybe his own guilt. The work was too straining for him and left him feeling very uncertain with himself. I do remember something curious he once asked. Yes? At one time he asked me whether I believed rats had souls. It had something to do with a private experiment of Dr. Johnson's. He was using a Karari poison to paralyze rats. Then he would revive them at a lower temperature. On the theory it would retard the aging process. The thing that seemed to upset Tom most was that when the rats recovered, their personalities were altered, diffused, almost soulless. If they were human, one could almost say that they were without souls. But that's absurd, of course. Only human beings have souls in a strict sense. Did Tom ever suggest that Dr. Johnson planned any such experiments on a high order of mammal? If he did, that would be a matter of confession. If you'll excuse me, I have some people waiting for that purpose now. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Father. I have sinned, Father. Yes. Tell me your sins, my son. Yes? I have sinned against the church. <laughs> Therefore, I need absolution. Absolution, Father. <laughs> <laughs> Hello? Anne, I'm cold. Help me, I'm so cold. Who is this? I'll call the police. Anne, my body is so cold. Nam, help me. Hmm. Hello? Oh, Kevin, thank God. Please come over right away. Someone's trying to break in. What? No, I'm upstairs. All right. Oh, hurry, please. One sound and you've had it. 
I have a message from Tom. He says that hell is very cold and lonely. If you breathe one word of this to anybody, I was in the kitchen. Then I heard you scream. Did you see anyone else in the house? Not a soul. What's wrong? Your hand. It was cold as ice. Like death. Anne is rapidly becoming a threat to us in our research and our relationship. It needs to be talked out now. So, what do you suggest? You know I won't stand for murder. I'll fight you on that, Sven. We won't have to do that. Just transfer her from one existence to another. I'm sure Tom will enjoy the company. Tom would be better off dead. His problem can be solved in due time, I'm sure of it. But if you continue to cry... I know that turned too well. What are you hiding from me? If my recent calculations are correct, you'll have all the time you need to decipher that question. You did have your door locked at first? Mm-hmm. Why? A childhood fear, I guess. Like keeping out the boogeyman. And you only heard Anne? Of course. I suppose you think I'm crazy then. Just tired. That's right. I'm tired of you acting like nothing's going on around here. I mean, it's like you think that you... Come on. Come on, let's go. What's the matter with you? Get in the car. I'll explain at my place. Five seconds. Stop your watch. Let's try again. Time? Three seconds. like seeing a whole different world. Well, I don't see things, but I feel very close. You think I see too many things, don't you? No, I don't. I know somebody tried to break in. Your front door was jammed, and there were footprints around the area outside your window, and you still had blood on it. It all matches what you said. And Tom, you think I actually saw him then? Maybe, or somebody made up to look like him. I've got a feeling that nurse of yours is in on this also. How do I get rid of her? You don't. Not just yet. We don't want them thinking you're suspicious. Do you remember the favor I asked you? Yes, I remember, but I did not think you would get here that early. Sven and I have a staff meeting to attend. You go on. I'll wait for you here. You sure you're right? Carson told me you had, again, a bad nightmare last night. Mm-hmm. They'd talk about it when I get back. There's not much to tell, just a bad dream. I'll be fine. Wait for me here. I will. I couldn't figure out why Anne wouldn't tell me she loved me. There was really no way to be sure what she was feeling, but I thought if she'd do a few favors for me and collect some evidence, that would be proof enough for the meantime. Thank you. 
That's Richard Kirk, all right. You're positive that he's the one that threatened you? Dead certain. How about this one of Russell? Do you know him? No. All right. Maybe Kirk is one of the men who attacked Tom in the hallway. The night Tom was killed? I'm not so sure Tom was killed. If someone was impersonating him, I'd know it. He's alive, I'm sure. But... But what? He wasn't himself. It was as if someone was hypnotized or programmed. Johnson's done something to him. And I intend to nail that bastard good. Now, hold on. You're probably on his list already. I don't want you taking any more risks. If I'm clever, there won't be any. Look, I'm invited to Johnson's house next week for his annual Halloween celebration. If it's any kind of party at all, I should have no trouble getting a look at his private lab. And then what? If I find anything connecting at all, I promise I'll call you as soon as I can, whether or not I find anything.
And you say she hasn't left yet? I saw her upstairs a few minutes ago. She's probably helping Lil. In any case, we can't trust Anne to play the frightened rabbit any longer. As soon as she leaves tonight, you're free to do as you like. I've made you strong and skillful. Therefore, McGuire will have a difficult time assembling things other than clues to your disappearance for a long time. I don't think it's necessary that Lil know about this. You frightened me. Do you see the man in the window? Yeah, spooky, isn't he? Did you kids go up to this house? Yeah, we did, but no one answered. Probably too cheap to buy candy. I wish I had some candy for you. I'm sorry. It's all right, lady. Good night. Good night. Trick or treat. Couldn't Kane? All right, but listen, stay there. I'll be there shortly. And I, I love you.
Dan, why are you hiding? Oh, Kevin. They've got Tom in there. Where? Follow me. That's right. It's locked. Let's get the hell out of here. Okay? I think so. I'm sorry. All of a sudden, you're in the middle of the road. Yeah. Let's get you to the hospital. Mm. Okay? I'm the watchman. Oh, thank God. Someone's after me. Yeah, witches and goblins. There's someone outside trying to kill me. Who's up there?
you. Hmm? <laughs> no. 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 Stop. Right there, Kirk. Listen to me, Kirk. Can you feel what's happening? It's all over. Feel your forehead, Kirk. That's right. It's hot in here. Your usefulness is over. Immortals live in the cool of the clouds. But you are burning. Because you are in hell. It's all right. He won't harm you now. I'm sorry we had to abduct you. If you had stayed at the party tonight and minded your own affairs, you would not have been brought to these circumstances. You're going to kill me, aren't you? Transform me into one of your things, like Tom. Don't be so ungrateful. We are going to bestow upon you a great gift. Eternal life. As a waxwork. He hadn't planned it this way. He had many experimental errors and Tom. And I am sorry he was one of them. We really didn't kill him. You see, death was simulated by slowing down his body processes. Then we revived him at a lower body temperature and injected a chemical acceleration of the healing functions to sustain life. The lower temperature is the prime key. The chill factor, it inhibits aging. Unfortunately, we cannot always calibrate this exactly. Some subjects are difficult to stabilize and therefore show signs of erratic and emotional responses. It's you who are unstable. You force them into something horrible on some vague promise of godliness. Ed, we force no one. Tom had agreed from the beginning to simulate suicide. Unfortunately, at the last moment, he changed his mind. But it was too late. Once started, the procedure was irreversible. I won't be one of your zombies. But you will. And with a minor operation, you'll be quite pleasant and manageable. Ben, we hadn't agreed to that last part. Don't tempt me, Lil. You'll make a lovely specimen yourself if you don't stay out of this. Please, Ben, don't make me do this. If I release you, will you work with me? Will you help me to realize this dream? A dream that creates monsters? You don't understand. We'll perfect the process. We'll give them an inner life to complement the immortal physical life they now possess. We will achieve what Sven never could achieve. There is a way. The dream will create a way. Your dream creates death, not life. You'll kill me just as you killed your lover. No, not if you'll help me. All right, Lil. Undo the straps. Everything will be fine, you'll see. First thing, we'll restore time to your tour's rightful position. I loved him, Anne. But I never trusted him like I trust you. I know you will help me. 
You don't know me at all. And as far as Tom's concerned, he's better off dead. No, Anne! No! You have killed him, but you have not killed the experiment. You feel a little cold for a while, but no pain, I promise. I thought I heard a disturbance. Father O'Brien, stop her. She's trying to kill me. Please, Father, help me. Of course I'll help you. <laughs> Love and immortality? I survived being hit by the car, but I was having a harder time healing from being run over by Anne again. I hadn't heard from her since coming into the hospital. Things seemed to have ended as quickly as they began. Could Dr. Johnson have been on to something? Would living as a frozen zombie forever be any better than facing the pain of things coming to an end? And I was thinking I never wanted to find out when Anne came to see me and told me what I'd been waiting to hear all along. Yes, Kevin. We were worried about you for a while. We? Why are all these people? Not now. I have something very important to tell you. I love you. I love you too, Anne. I'll love you forever. Just you and I forever. <sighs> love and immortality. Love. Mortality. <laughs> 